you know, these are complicated patients. They are patients that are sicker, they are nutritionally depleted, there's pain issues, sometimes you have all different types of, of uh, effects of the disease. You know, Peter, your approach at the Dana-Farber at Harvard, um, mm -hmm. how, how do you approach these patients? Is it, is it just you alone, or do you have people helping you out? Oh no, it's just me by myself. I wouldn't. I wouldn't think any differently. Yeah. <laughs> no, it, it, uh, we obviously have a team, like I'm sure uh, my colleagues here also have. Uh, but uh, certainly, we make sure that um, uh, patients' uh, needs are met. Um, almost all of these patients have problems with nutrition and and struggling to maintain their weight. So, a nutritionist is 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 typically involved in all of our cases. Uh, again, trying to maximize calories, helping patients who really have probably never given uh, much thought to diet in, in this way, uh, helping them with, uh, with ways of maximizing calories and eating right. Um, we uh, often will get a pain and palliative care consult involved, particularly if they have, uh, if they have pain that's refractory to, to the frontline agents. Um, and then clearly social work, psychiatry are all uh, often employed as well. Uh, but it's a team approach, and I think that that's uh, very important. Uh, it, the oncologist needs help. It's, it's, uh, we have so little time now to see our patients that uh, to focus on all these other issues uh, is really too much. And, uh, and clearly, uh, if you have various er areas of expertise involved, it, it really leads to better outcomes, as uh, has been shown, for instance, in um, a study from Massachusetts General Hospital. Yeah. yeah. This is the incorporation of palliative care Correct. With medical oncology, actually showing survival curves. Uh, survival to advantage, chemo. yes. Yes, yes, yes. Very good. So now we've got esophagogastric or gastroesophageal, whichever one you want to call it. And so we always used to lump these tumors in together, but now it feels like we're starting to separate them a little bit more. The esophagus versus the GE junction versus the gastric proximal versus distal. Yelena, what do you, how, how does this change your approach, mm -hmm. and especially in the local advanced setting where mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of emerging data about how we should treat these patients? Sure. So, yes, exactly. We need to make that distinction between locally advanced and metastatic. In locally advanced, it's all about the location, 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 location. Um, because the approaches, the surgical approach is different, and the uh, ability to clear the margins and uh, the type of operation that the patient needs really drives a lot of the, the goals of therapy. That being said, and we can come back that in, to that, I, the message that I want to put out there, in metastatic setting, adenocarcinomas should not be segregated into different studies based on the location. For the gastric and the esophageal TCGA, the cancer genome atlas, which is the molecular characterization of these tumors, shows that the fingerprint of esophagus adenocarcinoma in the G-junction adenocarcinoma or gastrocardiac adenocarcinoma is very similar. These are chromosomally unstable, P53 mutant, you know, RTK-driven tumors. So in a trial, if you tr will arbitrarily exclude esophageal cancers but then put on you know, gastrocardiac tumors, that's not a good approach. And from systemic chemotherapy options as well, for metastatic disease, we approach them the same. For localized disease, really the difference is between whether or not the patient will need an esophagectomy or a gastrectomy. Uh, and in US and uh, some parts of Europe, really the dogma is that we need to add uh, radiation, we do that to clear the margin because the R0 resection rate without the radiation in some of the studies can be as low as 60%. And if you can't resect the tumor completely, then you're really uh, doing a patient disservice by taking them f for that operation. With the combination strategies and the FLOT regimen, which you know, I'm, I'm sure Eric will talk about in a little bit, you know, some of the radiation um, uh, approaches may have been uh, you know, uh, lessened, uh, again, because radiation per se has never been shown to improve overall survival in a large study. It's just mostly to clear the margins. Yeah, and then FLOT encompassed esophageal GE and gastric tumors, is that right? There are different visions um, in the neoadjuvant setting. Um, I'm not talking on metastatic disease, but in the neoadjuvant yeah. setting. Um, in my center, as well as in many other centers, we give the strategy of perioperative chemotherapy for the real gastric cancer. 
And then for the G-junction tumors, where the, uh, the biggest bulk of the tumor is in the stomach, the so-called Siever type 3. Yeah. Yeah. When it's a G-junction uh, tumor uh, with the major bulk in the esophagus, or uh, just at the real transition, um, we usually go for uh, chemoradiotherapy. Okay. Although there are no randomized studies until now, larger studies, uh, to tell what is the best strategy, and one of the challenges is that if you look in many of the neoadjuvant or adjuvant studies, G-junction is sometimes included in studies mm -hmm. of the esophagus, mm -hmm. looking from up high to low, yeah. or from low to high. Yeah. Uh, in some of the stomach studies, it's also included. Um, and therefore, that, that's a little bit uh, different and, and difficult. Uh, and the approach is not everywhere the same. Um, in the UK, probably there is a bit of uh, strategy also for the G-junction uh, tumors uh, to go for perioperative uh, chemotherapy. On the continent, not everywhere in Europe, but uh, for sure in my center and in many other centers also, we take more the differential approach, uh, like I guess in Memorial Sloan is being done also for the G-junction for chemorat in the preoperative setting. Because one of the important arguments there is Although the relative survival benefit of the strategy of perioperative chemo and preoperative chemo radiotherapy, the relative survival benefit in the trial is quite identical, you achieve a bit more R0 resections, and the impact on R0 resections uh, is high with chemo uh, in locally advanced disease. And in real stomach cancer, that's not such a big issue for the surgeon, but in the G junctions, and especially those extending a bit more to the esophagus, that's crucial. And, um, and uh, if the R0 resections become lower, the outcome will be worse. Uh, yeah. And yeah. that's an important indirect argument to defend the strategy. Exactly, and if saying. it's a positive margin, it's usually pretty high up mm. uh, yeah. in the neck, and that's not a yeah. good place to have a positive mm -hmm. margin. No, and, and Kohei, you know, Japan, they've led a lot of these studies and trials. You, do you agree with that same approach? Yes, first of all, uh, still esophageal scans type is very common type in Japan. So very few adenocarcinoma in esophagus or EG junction. So for scans type, uh, <coughs> we usually start with uh, chemotherapy as a new adjuvant for even for localized disease. Chemoradiotherapy is also used, but this is uh, more common is uh, definitive treatment for patients who cannot tolerate for surgery. But currently, uh, we, we conducted uh, we conducted a phase three trial to compare chemotherapy as a double as a standard uh, neoadjuvant, and, uh, and uh, compare the chemoradiotherapy followed by surgery and the triple chemotherapy up front followed by surgery. This is a three arm study for esophageal cancer. And the uh, junction tumor and the gastric cancer is usually treated by abdominal surgeon and uh, D2 gastrectomy is still standard, followed by adjuvant. But uh, in Japanese uh, study, it suggested that uh, junction tumor is slightly worse outcome compared with the usual stomach cancer. So more patients received uh, neoadjuvant chemotherapy even in localized disease in Japan. Mm 